G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Welcome to the 2.5 Ixwa Strike dev server. Normally, I don't really do dev server content, but this time I wanted to go through some of the things that Gaijin would benefit from changing through this dev server. A couple of little things that I really like as well, we're going to have a look at and we're going to have a little talk about. We're also going to be sort of discussing any changes that might be able to be implemented with some decency and with some effectiveness. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Before we actually jump into all of this, we need to lay out a couple of little ground rules. First of all, the dev server is subject to change. I know that gets thrown around a lot, but do remember that this isn't representative of the product that is going to go to the live server. Gaijin also notes that there are sometimes bugs that go to the live server when it is transferred from the dev server, so keep your eye out for those types of little bugs there. Second of all, the dev server has changed a lot over the time that we have had it from the first dev server of 2.5 to the second dev server of 2.5 and probably if there's going to be a third the third one as well so we need to make sure that we know which one we're talking about so in the corner of the screen i'm going to have a little annotation saying which one is the first one and which one is the second to any footage that is behind that you see on the on the, on the screen so without further ado let's start off with the good things Alright, so starting off with the good things, we're having a look at the SU-17. Now this one will also be a little bit of a bad thing, we'll have a chat about that a little bit later, but I'd like to bring up the good things first, just to sort of uh, encourage a little bit of positivity here. So the SU-17 is the first swing-wing aircraft that we're going to get in the game, and you might think, well, why didn't they add the F-111, or the F-14 Tomcat, or the MiG-23? All of these planes were fairly famous and had swing wings, and it sort of makes a little bit of sense if you go by the, the big names. You know, F-14 is the next step up from the F-4, so why didn't we get that? And now, if you have a little bit of a think about it, it does make a lot of sense. On the dev server, the SU-17 currently tops out at just a little bit above 1,360 kilometers at uh, sea level, which is just a little bit faster than the Mirage and the MiG-21 BIS. So, having these planes sort of top out at that area, keeping the performance where it is without throwing the power creep out the window too much uh, is a really good start. Having the ability to just not jump into that next era while we still have a lot of filling left to do, that's really important. So making that big jump is going to be very, very costly for balance. And Gaijin have gone the smart route here without delving into the hype train. Very, very nice on Gaijin's part. I'd also like to note that the F-14's performance is vastly superior to that of the MiG-23. I've been told that it is more akin to something like the MiG-29 or the, uh, I think it's the Su-27, I'm not quite sure, but one of the later Soviet fighters. The F-14 was supposedly a little bit ahead of its time, uh, and something like the F-111 is a dedicated ground attacker, so it's not really appropriate for a sort of fighter-based game mode. Having the Su-17 in the game um, with the performance of roughly, I guess, MiG-21 BIS, is a really really good idea. It doesn't have radar, I don't even remember if it has RWR, it's not a particularly well equipped aircraft. It doesn't have many missiles, it doesn't really get anything in terms of its radar, it does get some good missiles and some good ground attack capabilities, but it isn't pushing the power creep any further, which is really really good. I will say that it is a little bit high in battle, uh, a little bit low in battle rating, but we'll sort of get to that in a little bit. The next good thing that we're going to have a look at is chaff and flares. So chaff and flares have been recently added to the dev server in the last patch, and they come at a cost of each other. So you can take either chaff or either flares, or a mix of both prioritizing one or the other. This gives you the opportunity to deal with radar guided missiles if you really want, at the cost of dealing with uh, IR guided missiles. For me, this is a really good change because it gives you something that you can use to counter something else, but it comes at a cost. It's not a get out of jail free card, which is something that I really love in uh, in balance. This comes on most of the planes that have flares in the game. It definitely comes on the Phantom. It definitely comes on the MiG-21 BIS, and I've seen it on the Harriers as well. So it is overall a very, very nice little change, and it's something that increases the quality of life for the average War Thunder player. Very, very nice move there, Gaijin. The next good thing that we have that is coming to the game is the F-8U-2 Cutlass. This is not the F-8 Crusader, this is a different plane altogether, one of those that I have confused alongside the A-7D as well. This particular plane comes with AIM-9Ds, sits at 10.0 and performs fairly appropriately for a 10.0 aircraft. 
Personally, I think it sits at the perfect battle rating at the moment. It does come with radar, and it does come with its uh, fair share of little perks. It's got 20mm revolver cannons, and for me, I think that this plane is a really nice little addition to 10.0. I think it's going to fit quite well. It's not obviously going to be a top dog, at least I hope it isn't. But overall, I think it's going to be a really, really nice addition. It's nice to see these sort of tiers being filled out by certain jets that otherwise may not have made it to the, to the, to the game, basically because the hype train gets in the way. Good on Gaijin for not taking the hype train route this time. I sincerely appreciate it. It is going to do the game wonders in the long term. Next up, we have a new A6M Zero. We've basically got a Zero with a little bit of extra armament and some extra ground attack capabilities. For me, this is going to be really useful for tanks RB or things like that, where a plane like, say, the A7M is not appropriate. Although it may not really fill a BR gap, it is still a World War II era prop. It is still an excellent addition to the game, and it is something that I might actually give a go in a video. For those of you that like World War II era props and feel like you're being missed out on, well, here's something to uh, sort of play with when the patch comes around. Personally, I think it's a really nice little addition, and I think Gaijin should do a little bit more of these in the future. Very, very nice move, Gaijin. The next change that we have that is really, really nice is a change of a plane that has been in the game for a very long time. The F6F5 is getting an update to its bomb drop. It gets two 1,000 pound bombs and traditionally they've always dropped in a pair. So now they're going to be dropping individually off the sort of underneath the fuselage uh, and this gives it the same amount of drops as a P47D. For me, this is a really good change because the F6F is, in my opinion, a better dogfighter and sort of better in a tanks RB close air support role. So if you're going to be doing some close air support, don't forget your Hellcat, make sure you get your bombs unlocked and give that one a little bit of a whirl in tanks RB. You do still get rockets, but honestly, if you're going to use HVARs at that tier, I don't really know what you're doing. But uh, 50 cals, HVARs, two bomb drops now, you have a fairly decent arsenal to work with. Very, very nice change indeed. Next up on the list, we have the Mirage 3E, which has been added to War Thunder after the Mirage 3C. It is basically a Mirage that has a little bit more engine power, and on the dev server it was also given flares. So this basically gives it a little bit more room to play with with the flares, gives it a little bit more ability and a little bit more capability at that tier. Uh, it's basically, apart from those changes, the same damn plane, which is okay. Because the only thing really that the Mirage C needed was perhaps a little bit more thrust and perhaps some flares. Maybe a couple more missiles, but we don't really get that until a little bit later on, which is okay. So for now, we basically have a Mirage that is 11.0 ready or 10.7 ready. Very, very nice change, and it is always good to see some equalization at top tier. The next change here is something that I didn't really expect, but was pretty damn good. It's an excellent sort of middle of the road, perfect solution, something that I really, really like. The Hungarian, no, the Austrian tank that was meant to come to the game into the German tree has now come into the French tree. This particular tank was a tank that was designed, or the hull at least, was designed by the Austrians, and the turret was designed by the French. And so Gaijin originally thought it was going to go in the German tree. Instead, what we have here is we have the French tree getting its own version, which is the Austrian version, and the Germans get an Argentinian version, which I think is a little bit more appropriate. Personally, this is the perfect middle-of-the-road solution for Gaijin, and honestly, I couldn't have thought of a better happy ending. Whilst there are a bunch more changes that I would really like to talk about, we're going to wrap it up here with the good changes that uh, I'd like to talk about in the South African tech tree. Personally, I think the South African tech tree was done perfectly. The way Gaijin has gone about adding multiple tech trees recently has meant that people who want to get into these tech trees have to go and buy a different premium if they're going to be grinding quickly. It means that Gaijin is going to get more money this way, and it also means that people are going to have to spend a lot of money to unlock multiple tech trees. Can you think about having a South African air tree, a South African ground tree? Instead, Gaijin have just combined it into the British tech tree, which means that you only need to buy British premiums if you want to buy a premium to grind up a tech tree. You basically now have double the grinding power with your British ground vehicles. And of course, I would assume that some British air trees are going to be filled up with South African vehicles. 
Personally, I really like the way that the South African tech tree is laid out. I think it's okay. I think the fact that they get a decent SPAA that Britain has been lacking for a very long time is excellent. And I think that the MBTs that South Africa is using, uh, that are being used to sort of fill out the British tech tree where it is needed, is an excellent change. Personally, I don't think the Chieftains cut it. Their mobility is just subpar, and their armor doesn't really stand up to it. The gun doesn't really stand up to it anymore. And for me... Having things like the Oliphant and the uh, MTTD are really, really lovely changes. Note also that the MTTD has a hard kill APS that hasn't been implemented in the game, but we might actually get a hard kill APS very, very soon. We'll have to see how that goes, but honestly, I'm okay with it not being implemented. I don't think it really matters. It's just nice to have the vehicles filled out. Britain needs a lot of mobility at these tiers, and having that mobility in their pocket is extremely valuable. Personally, I think this is the best way to implement minor tech trees. I would love to see something like the Yugoslavian tech tree in the Soviet tech tree, although the Yugoslavian nations and the Soviets or Russia don't really see eye to eye anymore. I think that that is a better solution than having something like a separate Yugoslavian tech tree, for example. Personally, I don't think this could have done, been done to China because China has a lot of vehicles at the sort of tier 5, tier 6 range and of course into the rank 7 as well. I think Gaijin just needs to take a little bit more time to add some more Chinese vehicles in this case, but overall the way the South African tech tree has been done sets an excellent precedent for further tech trees to be added within currently existing tech trees and this saves the consumer money, this saves the average War Thunder player or the War Thunder player money that they would otherwise be spending on South African premiums, grinding more copy-paste vehicles. I think this was done absolutely perfectly, and Gaijin should be congratulated for this. I think this is an excellent move, uh, an excellent PR move, and an excellent business move, because this makes the consumer feel like they're not being ripped off again for more premiums, and this is something that I really, really like. Alright, so now that we've had a look at the good things, we're going to have a look at the bad things and put our angie pants on. We're going to have a look at the SU-17, and whilst I said that that was a good change, overall, there are a couple of things that I would like to bring up, namely its battle rating of 10.0. On the dev server, whilst it is subject to change, it has been 10.0 for now to dev servers. One thing that I really want to point out is the fact that when its wings are fully swept back, it has a top speed of 1360, which is akin to the Mirage and akin to the MiG-21 BIS. This is extremely quick and this beats most other aircraft at sea level with the exception of I think the F-104S and maybe a couple of others that I'm not aware of but this makes it a very very fast plane. Not only that it gets a strike fighter air start and therefore will have a distinct advantage in air RB. On top of that whilst it doesn't have a radar it has 4R60s and 4R60s at 10.0 is incredibly low in my opinion. I think that 10.7 should be an ample battle rating for this plane because then it will face things that have a radar, things that have flares and things that have semi-active radar homing missiles. This is where the SU-17 will find its home as an appropriate aircraft in my opinion and 10.7 would be the ideal place. Yeah, it won't even let me launch it. Oh, wait! <laughs> All right, it locks it, it locks it, <laughs> How can we talk about this patch without discussing the AGM 65A Maverick missiles, which I'm just gonna be calling Mavericks. So as you saw in the uh, footage there, or is in the Twitch clip there, Justin Plays TV, which is a fantastic streamer, by the way, you should definitely check him out, uh, decides to use this particular missile on a aircraft or on an aircraft and use it with relative success because it's traveling in a straight line. Now, these missiles don't track well on aircraft or on ground units for that well, but it is a fairly capable missile, and there are four of them, plus the plane gets AIM-9Js with it. For me, this is going to be fairly annoying in RRB because you're going to have a bunch of people spamming AGM-65s at aircraft that they see right off the bat, and personally, I think this is going to be extremely annoying. Not only that, it tops itself out with flares and with RWR, and is fairly maneuverable and fairly decent at dogfighting as it is. The A7D is, in my opinion, a 10.0 or a 10.3 plane. It has no responsibility or it has no business being at that battle rating of, of 9.7 because it is simply too annoying to be facing things that are anything lower. 
in my opinion, the A7D needs to go to 10.7 or 10. Point, sorry, 10.0 or 10.3. No more, no less, because this plane is absolutely bonkers. It has plenty of ordnance options. It is extremely good in ground attack rolls. It is extremely good in air RB, and it is extremely good in basically every situation that you put it in. So, why has it not either been nerfed to the ground or put up in battle rating? I don't bloody well know, but I think Gaijin really needs to do something about this particular plane. It is going to be frustrating to play against this thing. And you know what? It's going to be just as frustrating to play with them, because most of the average players that are going to be playing this plane are going to take the AGM-65s, go and kill AAA, and not do anything for the team, leaving you with an absolute hole in your team, leaving you to clean up the mess that they have made. Personally, I can only see this as being a frustration factor for Air RB, and for Tanks RB, I don't really see it as the end of the world. I hope that I am correct here, but if you smoke up and stay within the smoke screen, the AGM-65 will sort of uh, self-destruct. So, I don't really see a massive problem, provided that people use their noggins, but in Air RB, this is just going to be really annoying, to be honest. The next thing I'd like to talk about here is the Leopard 2 PL, which is a squadron vehicle coming to Warth on the next patch at 10.7. Now the reason why I have a problem with a 10.7 squadron vehicle is because if someone can literally jump into a squadron for the first time with no experience, put some Golden Eagles into Gaijin's wallet, and pay for a squadron vehicle at 10.7. For me, this is a pretty piss poor way of balancing things and a pretty piss poor way of going about things. This is essentially like selling a top tier premium, but it's not premium, it's just a fanboy thing for polls. I genuinely think that this is going to ruin the matchmaker for the 2A6 and is going to soft balance the 2A6. I think this is a sort of shady way of Gaijin trying to do that, instead of actually balancing the thing or adding things that are relevant to its tier, like I guess a better M1 Abrams or a better Russian MBT, I guess like a T-14, or a better T-72, or something like that. For me, this is a really lazy way of doing things, or at least a sly way of doing things, and I don't like this from Gaijin. When Gaijin does this type of shit, it really irks me, because I can feel that this is going to be used to balance out the German teams. It is going to tank their win rate, because people are going to buy this thing, and they are going to take it into battle, not knowing what they're doing, and getting themselves killed respawning in a Panzer II and then dying again, and therefore absolutely tanking the win rate of the German teams artificially, when what they should have done is either not added the 2A6 in the first place, or added something that is a contemporary to the 2A6 in order to properly balance it. For me, this just feels lazy and feels very annoying that Gaijin are actually doing this in the first place, and I'm, I'm basically going to cut it here, otherwise I'm going to keep ranting, basically. It just, it just really, really irks me. The final change here that we just have to talk about is the Strike Fighter spawn. Gaijin have decided to reclassify an attacker aircraft as Strike Fighters, which to me seems okay at surface value. It basically gives aircraft a proper classification for those that aren't strictly classified as attackers and those that are sort of more leaning towards, I guess, multi role or more leaning towards strike fighting. This has basically resulted in a couple of aircraft being transferred from the sort of fighter spawn, as in the ground airfield spawn, to an air start with a little bit of speed and altitude. These aircraft include the AV-8A, AV-8C, Harrier GR1 and Harrier GR3. You can see where this is going. Harrier with an air spawn is going to be ridiculous. It's going to be absolutely batshit insane. It climbs like a monster already and sits at 10.0, so you're going to be fighting 9.0s with like an 8km altitude advantage. For me, this is absolutely batshit insane. I don't know why Gaijin have decided to give everyone an air spawn. In my opinion, they should give them a runway start with a little bit of speed, kind of like they do with the F-84 at the very most. Ideally, I think these things should be trialed at least with a ground spawn, or should at least be given something better in terms of their rewards in order to differentiate the classes. I don't think giving them an altitude spawn is the answer. I think giving them an air start maybe behind their aircraft at the runway, just maybe 100 meters off the runway, would probably be enough in this case. Things like the Harrier are going to absolutely be bonkers once again if this happens. And for me, that is going to further put nails in the coffin for that battle rating. 
I would really, really love Gaijin to have a look at this and address this before it goes to live, because I think this is a really stupid decision. Overall, this particular patch, Update 2.5 Hitler's Bike, is going to be a fairly interesting patch. We have some interesting vehicles, I think most of the patch has been done fairly okay. There are just a couple of changes towards the higher tiers that I would really like to see addressed, particularly the A7D, the SU-17, the Strike Fighter Airspawn, and the Leopard 2 PL. One thing I would like also to note about the Leopard 2 PL is that you could potentially lower its battle rating by maybe giving it uh, crappier shells. Give it DM-13 and make it sit at 10.3 or 10.0. You never know, it could be a viable solution, but we'll just have to see how it goes in the uh, lead up to the live server and of course to the deployment of the live server. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Of course, leave your feedback in the description or in the in the comments below. I actually read all your comments because I have an app that allows me to do that, which is called the YouTube Studio. So if you leave a comment, 99% chance that I'll actually see it. Unless this video gets like a million comments, then I'm probably going to be a little bit hard pressed there. Regardless, I'd really like to thank you all for your support over the last couple of weeks. It has meant a lot to me. And if you would like to support the channel financially, if you have the spare money to do so, you have, of course, the Air Models link, which is in the description below. You have my Patreon, you have PayPal, you have my merch. And of course, you can subscribe to me on Twitch if you really want the emotes. Alternatively, just leaving a like and comment, feeding the algorithm is really, really lovely. I sincerely appreciate when everyone does that. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. I'd really like to thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.